Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. Again in an unassuming location, Canberra, ACT, you're about to see a guy and his dad and some of the nicest Holdens and memorabilia around on this week's episode of Classic Restos on the Road. Now, before I'm about to show you passion with one family, I thought I'd give you a little entree to today's show. In the meantime, a friend has just turned up with an E.H. Holden that he has owned for over 50 years. This is uh, my 64 E.H. Premier. Um, I bought it in 1966 um, after I started my apprenticeship at, um, on them in 1963 and um, I thought, I, when I saw them in the showroom, I thought that's the type of car I want and um, I bought it and um, I've had it ever since and I used it as our, my own wedding car and then um, brought my daughters home when they were born in it. And, uh, in the old Canberra Hospital and um, then we uh, use it for their weddings and now my um, grandchildren use them for their graduations and uh, enjoying every moment of it. It's hard to believe I've had this car for 54 years, the time just passed so quickly and um, I've enjoyed every moment of it. They've sold about a quarter of a million of these EHs in their time and um, I think there's still quite a few of them around, but they're a um, very popular car at car shows and um, you can't not love them because of their shape and uh, they're um, just a great car to drive and anybody has got them, they either haven't got them and they want them or, you know, and that's um, what I love about them. It's been a great car, it's very reliable and um, I can... I'm pretty sure I could just jump in and go anywhere in Australia in it without a worry in the world. This particular car is um, fitted with a five speed and um, a three way diff. Uh, it's beautiful on the highway to uh, travel in and, um, and it's very it's it's very economical and um, I just love it, it's um, a car that you just love to hop in and drive. It's um, a hobby of mine, I do a fair bit of work on them and um, I really enjoy um, helping other people with their old EHs and uh, I'm a panel beater by trade and um, there's always somebody looking for a get a bit of a hand from me and, uh, and I just love them, yeah. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now... So's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hair and Forbes has the range. Welcome back. Well, there's no doubt 
what you can fit inside a double garage on a domestic household block. This memorabilia collection inside here is not only outstanding, but also emotional as well, marking the end of Holden in Australia as we once knew it. Uh, I, I like cars, but in particular I like Holdens and early Holdens. Um, I love the memorabilia, uh, all the little trinkets that, that they used to have. But these days it's all very boring. We don't have all this lovely, lovely stuff anymore. Yeah, I really love the memorabilia, but there's um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good memories associated with the cars as well. Behind me here, FC and the Lounge Edition Commodore. They were my wife's cars. Unfortunately, she passed away from cancer about nearly four years ago now. She was right into the cars as well, so, um, and I guess those two cars in particular, I think will remain a legacy in our family. And the FB here, which uh, a mate of mine used to own, unfortunately he was killed in a motorbike accident about 11 years ago. Um, I did a lot of work on the car with him, so uh, uh, Kath and I bought that from, from his estate. And out in the driveway at the moment, it's my FC that I bought about 25 years ago and mum and dad helped, helped to restore it. How can you not love these old cars? Um, it's good fun. I've, uh, I think the best part about it is all the wonderful people I've met over the years. Um, I, I guess close to 40 years since I um, really got into, in, into the car scene. Um, we joined, joined the local FXFJ club when Dad bought an FJ panel van nearly 40 years ago and uh, it really sparked my interest in the automotive history of this country, which is quite unique. So over my right shoulder is uh, a 59 FC that, um, that my wife Kath wanted. When we, when we first saw it, she said, I want it. <laughs> so that's her car. Um, she, she was pretty keen, keen with, the, with the cars as, as well. She was already um, suffering from cancer at the time we bought it. She nicknamed the car Grandma um, because that's what the grandkids call her Grandma. And she said once she's gone, the uh, you know for years to come, the kids could take Grandma for a drive on a on a Sunday or something, and that that was comforting to her to think that that she might be remembered in that way. The history of this car is actually quite interesting. Well, the history that I know about it, I don't. I, I don't know how many owners it's had. Um, it's it's unrestored. It's in it's in really good order. It drives lovely. Um, it has had a replacement engine at some point in its life, but uh, the body and trim is still very good. But uh, I actually looked at that car. It was advertised in the Canberra Times one Saturday, and Dad and I went to have a look at it. And I'm going back over 25 years ago, and we arrived just as someone else bought it. <laughs> so we missed out on it. Um, and then I guess it wasn't that long after that my other FC came up. It, it actually got traded in at work on a new Caprice, and I bought it off the used car lot at work. Uh, funnily enough, they're identical cars, they're the same colour. And anyway, we, the, the one that I bought, we, um, I drove it drove it to work every day for a couple of years and then we um, pulled it off the road and mum and dad helped to restore it. Well, they, dad did most of the work, to be honest. <laughs> then the, the guy that had bought this other FC, the one that Kath ended up with, he rang me all those years later. He, he must have had my phone number. Maybe I gave it to him the day he bought it. But he rang and said, I'm thinking about selling the FC. Do you know anyone that might be interested in it? And so Kath and I went to have a look and as soon as, as soon as Kath saw it, she said, I want it. The car in the driveway, this FC of mine, it, uh, <laughs> when 
When I first saw it, um, I work at a local Holden dealer and have for a long time. This fellow bought it in for a trade-in. He wanted to buy a new Caprice. Him and his wife had bought this FC brand new uh, and uh, they, used to, they lived in Sydney at the time. They moved to Canberra in the early 70s. Um, he was actually a magistrate in Canberra here. And uh, for most of, most of their time in Canberra, he had a government car. So the FC didn't actually get used very much. Um, and then he retired, got his golden handshake, and they come down to the dealer to buy a new Caprice. Anyway, the used car guy knew that I was into, into the early, early Holdens and uh, he uh, came in and asked me if I could tell him what I thought it would be worth as a trade-in. And I guess the only answer I gave him is that I want it. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, I, I, I bought it off the used car lot. Um, it, was, it was a good original car, um, 19,000 original miles. However, as they do with age, the paint was had it, that sort of thing. So, but uh, I ended up driving it every day for a couple of years and then uh, decided to pull it off the road and uh, restored it with my dad and my mum and a few mates helped. It was a lot of fun. It's a great car and it's come up beautiful. You know, and that's, that's 20 years ago now since we restored it. Memorabilia, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> Um, I guess that's my real love, um, more than the cars themselves, I think, um, because there was just so much stuff and what I have is just a drop in the ocean. Um, and new stuff seems to appear all the time that other people have got. Um, and I just love looking at it, looking at all the stuff and, and showing it off. Um, you know, there's, there's old signs, there's sales brochures, little trinkets, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of wonderful stuff like that. Even, even uh, new old stock parts, like they had wonderful packaging for parts back then, instead of just a plain box like you get today. Um, the packaging is just awesome. It was an art form in itself. I guess I've, I've been to a lot of car shows over the last nearly 40 years. Um, the cars have won lots of trophies, but it's not about the trophies to me. Um, I've made some lifelong friendships by going to these these car club events. Um, met some just wonderful people, and that's to me that's what it's all about. How you doing, Graham? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks, Lech. Enjoying yourself? Yeah, always enjoy myself when we're talking about cars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, might I say I think it's uh, beautiful that you, you're keeping the tradition alive uh, with Kath. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's my job to, to keep her memory alive. Yeah. It's lovely you've got the FC and one of the last VFs as well, which uh, uh, was her car too. Yeah, cause she, and she was such a rev head too. Yeah, so she, she loved her V8s, that's for sure, but she liked the old cars too. Yeah. yeah. How many kids you got? Two. Yeah, and three grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. And they uh, they love, love it out here, having a look around? Yeah, yeah, uh, and I guess... Um, particularly the grandson, um, he follows me around like a shadow in the garage and he's like, he's only, he's eight years old, but he's pretty handy with the tools and everything now as well. Yeah. So he, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Once again, the importance of a shed and it doesn't have to be a huge one. We've got a typical example here of how you've got so much stuff squeezed into here, but this is your haven. This is the place where you come. This is the, this is the therapy zone, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, don't understand people that don't have a shed. <laughs> Feel sorry for them. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter what you're into. It could be collecting stamps. If you get up in the morning and it's something that you want to do and you look forward to doing, that's the key. You've got to be passionate about something in life, I think. Yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't just work. That's not life. No. Graham, the car in the driveway, the FC, restored by yourself and your dad. Now, straight away, that's a... That tugs at everyone's heartstrings. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, there'd be a lot of guys out there who would love to be able to say that they've restored a car with their dad. Now, your attention to detail, your workmanship here, your father, Tony, who we're going to see a little bit later, he's good on the spray gun. He goes all right. 
He goes pretty well. <laughs> he's uh, self. If you use rattle can with the marble <laughs> in it. I. He's done a very good job with that. Uh, he's a self-taught spray painter, um, and he does really well, and he enjoys it. So um, that's that's probably when you enjoy something, you do it well, don't you? Well, your driveway's got a little bit of a slope. You walk up behind, and you can see the diff quite easily. And it underneath the car is as good as on top. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And interestingly. Um, Something we tried really hard to do with that car um, in particular is to not over restore it. I wanted it to be as close as possible to how it came out of the factory, yes. warts and all. Yes. I think this is where Holden, uh, in their prime back in this era, there's no doubt about it. As I've said before on the show, it's not about the horsepower. You had one engine to choose from. Let's just put that aside for a moment. Let's look at the body on these cars. They were a fantastic body, I think, bang for buck back in the day to, to, to be able to make a car here in Australia and get the quality of this body. Um, the stainless steel, the bright work, the workmanship that they put into the grill of the car, the overall presentation of these early Holdens. I think the more that I do classic restos over the years, the more these things can actually, they can definitely grow on you. And it's just plain to see how much quality really did go into these cars. Absolutely, and, and it, it makes me proud to know that we did that in our country with, with effectively very little resources mm. and um, we did such a great job. And, you know, FC in particular, uh, like in 1958, had 50% of the new car market. Yeah. Every second yeah. car sold was an FC. Yeah. And when you think about that, that that's yeah. hard to comprehend in 2020. But yeah. I don't think I've ever closed a door on one of these cars. It didn't feel right. Um, uh, the, the, the gauge of the steel used, the weight in the doors, click, click, pushing on the doors, they just sh they shut beautifully. Um, and, of course, the NASCO accessories available in the day as well um, to turn a base model Holden um, into a prem, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was almost the sky's the limit with the amount of accessories you could get and... Uh, again, another one of my passions is the NASCAR accessories. It's just yeah. awesome. And, 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 of course, these days, some of that stuff is really hard to get. So when you track down mm. that elusive NASCAR accessory, yeah. it's, it's so uh, rewarding. Again, well, you know, uh, I love your eye for detail. Um, uh, incredible once again. Uh, you look at the front of the, the FC, again, sitting in the driveway, even the lower control arm. You know, even that stands out as a feature on a car. I don't think a lower control arm was ever meant to be a feature on a car, aesthetically, but <laughs> they are on that car. And, of course, your memorabilia here, a whole wall full of trophies, which is just uh, a massive accolade to, again, a testament to the quality of what you've got here. And, um, mate, on that note, Graham, I want to thank you uh, for your time today and uh, allowing this episode to be filmed here at your premises. You're very welcome, and thank you. And uh, just a little note, yeah, cramming all this stuff into this space is a real challenge. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, level of these cars, Tony. Um, what's the story on the 49 behind us? I just acquired it, I don't know, 30 years ago. Brought it home. Mum said, what are you doing bringing that heap of junk home in our yard? Because it was in pieces virtually. And then we just decided, it sat, it sat in the shed for about 12 months, I think, before we decided to do any work on it. And then we decided to do a restoration on it, which took us, I think, was less than 12 months anyhow. Did the whole restoration. So we're looking at a th roughly a 30-year-old restoration behind us. Yes, yes. 91 it was finished. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, you, you could have told me that just left the, the panel shop last year. I, I wouldn't know any different. It, it, it is brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's still, it still stayed very well, considering uh, it was painted in the shed at home with, uh, by myself and rubbed down and helped with Graham. A lot of work, but I did the actual painting and buffing and that. Um, with I'm only self-taught, so there's no no experience there. Only what we've done ourselves. Well, there you go. If that's not inspiration for anyone uh, watching this episode, well, nothing will be. What a what a grand piece of Australian history, though. Uh, I guess 30 years down the track now, uh, have you a different appreciation for this car now, Tony? Oh yes. I, when I first bought it, it was. The reason I, I actually bought this car was because my first car I bought when I was 17 was a 48215, which was a 50 model, which is very close to this. So always your first car, you always want another one if you can find one. So There's no such thing as, oh, it's just an old Holden anymore. No, no, it's all changed now, in the last, especially in the last few years. Uh, I think they will appreciate the value more, but it's not so much the value of them, it's the prestige I suppose of old owning the, yeah. the, these cars such a simplistic car but they've got an element of grandeur as I mentioned uh, earlier while having a, a talk with Graham I just I love the metal work and um, the aesthetic features of these Holdens yes yes they, they, they're quite a good uh, good car um, it's just a bit of a shame they're not still making them but that's beyond our control it's just been a real treat having you on the show. Love you, Holden. Uh, love what Graham's done with his cars as well and uh, keep up the great work, hey, mate? Okay, thanks, Fletch, for all that and uh, thanks for your interview. Good on you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, this old girl of mine here, it's a nice old car. Uh, it's great to drive because the amount of people that turn their heads and look when you go past and think, oh, that's a nice old car going past. Uh, you can just tell, you know, by the looks on their faces. Uh, very reliable. Um, I would take this car anywhere I like. I would, I would drive around Australia in it without worrying. Anywhere at all. I know the car inside out, so I don't have any problems taking it anywhere. It's just, just, just a great old car. Um, like most people with their... It's a hobby. It's, it's only a hobby, but it's a pretty good hobby. Um, very expensive one sometimes, but mostly a pretty good hobby. Uh, just really enjoy it. When these cars were br brought brand new by... Uh, you know, different families and that, it must, they must have been so proud to be able to uh, park them in their driveway and show them off to their neighbours and think, all right, I've bought Australia's own car. Not knowing then that these cars would still be around 70 years later. When I'm driving along with the car, yeah, with the windows down, the, the wind, quarter windows open, the breeze blowing through, it's just great. It's just, it just reminds me of when I first got a licence and first drove a car, which was very similar to this one. So it just brings back a lot of memories and uh, yeah, quite enjoy it. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, filmed in Canberra, the ACT. Of course, featuring John with his beloved EH, the owner for over 50 years. Then, of course, Graham with his cars, his memorabilia, and a special tribute to his wife, Kath. And rounding off today's show with Tony and his incredible 1949 215 Holden. I hope you have enjoyed the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and join drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.